Good evening, parents. Welcome to our grade, uh, our middle French immersion parent information night for Featherston Drive Public School. In an ideal world, we'd be, we'd be gathering as a group in our library here in the building, but sadly, we are unable to do that safely. And uh, as a result, we need to do it this way, but we'll certainly make the best of it uh, virtually. We just checked the uh, parent questionnaire on our school website. There are currently no questions from parents. We'll check once more before we wrap up the presentation later on this evening, okay? My name is Brian Chiesa. I'm the principal here at Featherston Drive Public School. This is my third year here. And I have uh, Madame Albari, the vice principal who is in the other room uh, right now. She'll pop by and say hi later. And we have uh, Madame Laporte uh, on with us who is our grade four MFI teacher. That's the entry point for MFI. Uh, we'll be saying a few words in a little while. And then we have two students who were gracious enough to offer their time and to discuss their experience in the program. Uh, one of these girls, Noor, is in grade four. Uh, again, that's the entry point. So she'll speak to her experience from September to now in, in very unprecedented conditions, obviously, but still she'll be able to share her experience. And then we'll have Madeleine who will speak as, a, as an MFI grade eight student who has been with us here at Featherston in the MFI program since grade four. So she'll be able to walk you through her whole experience within the, the five year range. Okay, so I'm just going to present my screen. Middle French Immersion. Here's a picture of our beautiful school in the spring. What is Middle French Immersion? So Middle French Immersion, as I briefly mentioned, starts in grade four uh, in comparison to early French Immersion, which is a grade one start. Uh, early on, the focus definitely is on repetition, gestures, and visuals. I mean, I'm not can speak to that later. In grades four to six, 66% uh, of the subject matter taught is in French. So that's all subjects except for language and math. So uh, typically they have the same teacher for language and math in English. In grades seven and eight, 50% of the instruction is in French. So a bit less in French and more in English. You may be asking yourselves why to enroll your child in an immersion program. Well, here are a few points to consider. It does expose children to another language and another culture. It does offer job opportunities in a bilingual city and country, which we're in. It does offer students a new academic challenge. It aligns with the Ottawa Carleton District School Board's character traits and exit outcomes, such as making sure that our kids, when they leave, um, uh, secondary school that, to make sure that they are goal-oriented, globally aware, innovative, digitally fluent, among many others. And also allows the opportunity to meet new friends, uh, which I'm sure the girls will be able to attest to later on. Degree of French proficiency. So MFI students, uh, if they choose to continue on the path of French, do join early French immersion students once they enter grade nine in secondary school. Uh, there's a similar level of French competence by the end of high school. And that is demonstrated by the DELF test. DELF uh, uh, means Diplôme d'études en langue française, a test that they can take at the grade 12 level. So it does show that it's a similar level of competence, whether they were in MFI, uh, or EFI, it does tend to balance out in the end. Conversational French skills tend to be a strength in post-secondary education or in areas of work. Suitability of MFI programs. So many of you might be wondering if this is the right fit for your child. And that's something that we often uh, encounter. Again, it would be easier to have the face-to-face -to, -face to be able to answer your questions or hear your concerns. Uh, we'll do our best to do it on this slide deck. Uh, certainly if your questions are not answered when we wrap up, you can always call the school tomorrow and I'll, happy, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you then. So consider the following factors. First, language development. So how much of a grasp your child has already in their first or possibly first second language before tackling a new one. Their current success in core French class. So typically, uh, if your child is now in, a, in an English mainstream program in grade three, they would have 40 minutes of core French a day. Okay, even if they're in the English stream, they do get that every day. Uh, their learning skills, so more specifically, how uh, what their work ethic is like. 
you know, they are young, but if they do have a sense of responsibility and commitment and, uh, and independent work skills that are required in a class to succeed, that certainly will help them uh, as they begin uh, this, this new MFI journey in grade four. And the commitment and interest of student. It certainly is beneficial if the student is, is interested in trying this out and is eager to give it a shot. Parents and guardians, uh, just to be aware that, you know, th this is pretty much a five-year commitment, not to scare you, it's certainly a great journey to get on, but, uh, it, you know, it is a commitment. It is absolutely not necessary for you to know French for your child to be successful in MFI. That is definitely a myth. It's, it's simply not true. If your child is committed, has a good work ethic, and, and, and tries hard, they can definitely be successful without you speaking the language. When we talk about the commitment for five years, we, we, you know, we mean more in the sense of, um, of helping them make sure their homework is done on time and that they schedule their time accordingly because it can be a bit of a transition, especially in grade four, and especially if they're involved in extracurriculars, just to make sure you balance all of that out. Parents, oh, as I mentioned, second bullet, parents do not need to know the language for their child to be successful. Homework is a reinforcement of concepts taught in school. All assessed work is typically completed in class. So in terms of homework, it would typically be more uh, practicing their independent reading or their, um, um, and we also have now apps and programs online that teachers recommend on Google Classroom to reinforce those skills or, you know, uh, grammar sheets or, or skills-based sheets just to reinforce, again, what was taught in the classroom. Anything we tend to report on on the report card uh, would, would be done in the classroom with the teacher's support. Be ready to support your child throughout this challenge, in particular uh, grade four, uh, simply because that is the entry point. So certainly it's a, it's a big change for the kids, a new language they're learning, a new school for most of them, new teachers, new peers, it's a lot to take in. But for the most part, uh, it's, it's very successful for, for, for the students. It just takes a bit of time. Subject breakdown. So in grades four to six, uh, they, the students get 40 minutes of English language arts every day. They get 60 minutes of math taught in English every day. And those 60 minutes of math are uninterrupted, not even by recess or nutrition break. They need to be all in one block. All of the subjects taught in French. So that's French, social studies, or I should say, études sociales, les sciences, les arts, éducation physique et santé, all in French. In grade seven, eight, a little different. Again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do, uh, there's a bit more English instruction than in the junior level. So they get, again, this, uh, they get 60 minutes of English language arts versus 40. Uh, 60 minutes of math, that doesn't change. Then we also tack on an extra 30 minutes of English in another subject. So that, that's, that's sometimes uh, the arts because it's easier to timetable that way. Other subjects taught in French. So again, French, social studies, science, arts, phys ed, and health. So 150 minutes of, of each per day. Transportation. So transportation uh, to middle French immersion classes is provided by the OCDSB. That could be a yellow school bus or it could be a van, simply depending on what your address is. Conditions apply based on distance from school. So if you're 1.6 kilometers or more, you qualify. If less than that, you're designated as a walker because it's too close uh, for, for transportation to qualify. And of course, make sure Fedeson Drive Public School is indeed your designated school for middle French immersion. Uh, we draw from quite a, a, a large uh, area here, uh, but certainly we can check that for you if you call the office or if you go to uh, the ocdsb.ca website uh, mentioned here on the slide, you can go to the school locator function. If you type that in the search, it's fairly easy to locate. You just type in your address and the program you want. So you tick off MFI and it tells you exactly what school you should be going to for the program. So we have a couple of slides of frequently asked questions uh, that we've had from parents over the years. So some parents have asked if their child's English language skills drop just because they are so immersed in learning a new language. Uh, research shows that immersion has no negative effect on English language acquisition. You know, they have, they have quite a bit of it uh, every day. They have 33% in grades four to six, and then 50% uh, in grades seven and eight. So they still have a nice balance. 
What about achievement in other areas? Again, research shows that immersion students perform just as well as students in the English program. Again, having the work ethic certainly helps here, but in general, this is the case. What if my child's first language is neither English or French? Uh, I assure you we have many of these students here at school. Um, that is not an issue. Uh, the district's international languages program is there to support the first language. They offer uh, a school uh, typically on Saturdays. You can take any language under the sun. Uh, I used to work with that program on the weekend, you know, Spanish, German, Chinese, Japanese, you name it, Arabic, Somali. Uh, those programs are offered. Uh, it's certainly not mandatory. Many families do choose to partake just so that they can maintain uh, their, their main language, their first language. Your child's strengths in their first language are typically transferred over to the language being learned. Here's the fun part, pictures. So you see uh, the one and only Madame Laporte at the far left, upper left, upper left hand corner. So she's with us here live on the screen. She teaches grade four uh, French immersion, the entry point. So before I go on, I just wanna make sure that I clarify one piece. So uh, this year with COVID-19 and some students and teachers having the option to, to move on to the, uh, the virtual campus, uh, we're expecting to go back to normal next year, but this is based on what we had timetable for this school year in the fall before mm -hmm. students had the opportunity to go uh, uh, to remote learning, okay? So we have Madame Annie up top as well, who uh, is assigned to the grade four or five uh, French immersion this year. Madame Hackshaw, uh, left bottom is grade five French immersion. Monsieur Michaud in the middle is grade six middle immersion. And Madame Sarah teaches all the French stuff to the grade sevens and eights uh, this year. Okay. Now these class configurations, the four, the four, five, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, that, that changes year to year. Like next year, we, we could potentially have two straight four classes or two straight fives. It totally depends on how many students we have enrolled in each grade. And then here we have a slide dedicated to our, our, our English and math teachers. So they do the instructing in English. We have Miss Laurie up top who takes care of the grade four and five math and English. Mrs. Abby to her right, she takes care of some of the fives and sixes. Miss Thorsell does grade six math and English. And Mr. Edwards uh, bottom right does the seven and eight math and English. School day schedule. Uh, no need to go through it. You can see it there for yourselves. Uh, just note that the first recess nutrition break, oh, 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 I need to go back, is from 11.15 to 12.05. So that's a 50 minute block. Currently we do 25 minutes of each. So part of a school goes outside for 25 minutes while the other uh, section eats and then we swap so that they have equal time to eat and play. And then the next break is at 1.45 until 2.25. So we do a 20-20 split, uh, so same idea. Okay? And that works well, especially with, uh, with our, um, our COVID-19 safety protocol in place. We are a late start, so we start at 9.15 and we wrap up at 3.45 in the afternoon. So uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity to meet our new mascot. Uh, we had a, a competition before the, the holiday season to, uh, to get a new mascot because Featherston Drive did not have one. So we asked students to submit entries. It was very exciting. We got, I think, over 75 entries. So we had students uh, then vote on their favorite one. It was a tight race, but what you see in front of you was the winning design by Kellen Riker in grade eight. Uh, then we consulted with our designer at the board office to, to, to tweak the colors a bit to represent our colors more accurately. Our school colors are red and black. So here you go, the final product. We're very, very proud of it. So we're now in phase two of our competition. On Tuesday, we sent out the Google form for classes to vote on the mascot's name because we uh, took student submissions for a name all of last week. So now they have until tomorrow to vote on their favorite name and that will hopefully be unveiled, uh, if not by tomorrow, end of day, early next week. And then we'll share the good news uh, on our website. So, so much to offer here at Fedison Drive Public School. 
In terms of academic programs, we have the English stream from kindergarten to grade eight. We have, of course, the MFI from grades four to eight. We have an autism program that thrives here at Featherston uh, from K to eight. Once again, we have four autism classes this year. We have three that are in person and one that is virtual. We also have an English literacy development class for grades six, seven, and eight. And we have an instrumental music program for grades seven and eight. Extracurricular activities, uh, I just mentioned a few of them. There are many, many more. Of course, that's on hold again due to safety uh, protocol with COVID-19, but we certainly hope to get those up and running again real soon. Environmental club, leadership club, chess, creative writing, hacker gal, so that's uh, coding for girls, instrumental music, a choir and band. Uh, we, we, we usually have an annual musical, we have competitive sports, we have intramural sports for all students, including cricket. We are the only school in the district that has a cricket pitch in the back. And of course, we have a breakfast program for any students who wish to have some healthy snacks before starting their day. So I have a slide for questions. Sadly, we cannot uh, have parents ask questions live with our YouTube format. I apologize. I'm gonna ask Ms. Albari to check the questionnaire. Uh, I don't believe we have any questions though. Um, so again, if you do have questions that were not answered or won't be answered by Madame Laporte or the girls in a few minutes, you can call us at school uh, tomorrow. We'll be happy to help or next week whenever, whenever is good for you. Okay, so I'll give you the number at the end of the presentation. Madame Laporte, if now is a good time, if you'd like to say a few words, that would be fantastic. Okay, well, hello everyone. I am the French immersion teacher for the grade four program at Featherston Drive Public School. Um, I just jotted down a few things I'll share with you. Um, number one, it is important to be optimistic about the struggles that come with learning a new language. It truly does take time. So one must be patient and one must be optimistic. Um, giving your child time to adapt to the new program is also important. Uh, it'll be difficult at first and there will be frustrations, um, but with time and patience, uh, your child will begin to feel more confident in the French Immersion Program. Uh, another thing to remember is that learning happens at different stages for most children. Some children need more time to gel. You don't have to speak the language at home for your child to learn a new language. Just remember patience and understanding when your children, when child hits a few bumps in the road. It is important to keep positive and to assure them that this too shall pass. They will feel frustrated and you just need to stay positive and let them know that their frustrations will pass in time. After the second year, I would, in the French program, I would uh, listen to your child and review and reflect um, how your child is feeling, if they're happy and if they're feel a sense of, if they feel a sense of perseverance, a sense that uh, they can keep on going. French immersion isn't for everyone, but giving, giving the child time to adapt and a positive reinforcement and con consulting with the teacher, this can make it very successful for your child. At Featherston, the French teachers are dedicated in programming and teaching to bring out the most in your child's learning and their school experiences. Whether you choose French immersion for your child is a parental decision. It's a family decision. In the end, you know your child best. And as teachers, we will help to navigate and guide your child through their educational needs and their educational successes. So thank you. Merci, Madame Laporte. Beautifully said. Okay, and I will reiterate that Madame Laporte is a grade four MFI teacher, so that's the entry point. And you know, as she mentioned, for for all staff in the program, uh, she's certainly no exception. No exception, right? Very caring, very patient, and, and uh, is always there to meet their needs. Okay, please be aware of that. 
All right. So now that the uh, the uh, the real fun part, we're going to hear from two of our students. We're going to start with Noor, uh, who's been very patient. Merci, Noor. She's going to say a few words. I think she's going to speak en français et en anglais. So without further ado, Noor, the floor is yours. Just make sure you un you unmute your mic, please. Uh, Mr. Chazon. Oh, there she is. Okay, perfect. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Noor. Je suis en quatrième année. Je suis venu de l'anglais de troisième année en français de quatrième année. Quand je suis venu à Featherston, je ne connaissais pas beaucoup le français. Après quelques mois, mon vocabulaire fait instantanément étendu, mon accent, écriture, lecture, grammaire et science s'est amélioré. Day after day, I felt more confident speaking and writing in French. J'ai rencontré tellement de nouveaux professeurs et amis. I can now communicate with people who feel more comfortable speaking French. J'ai beaucoup découvert. La chose la plus difficile en français pour moi est la conjugaison du verbe. Mais avec de la pratique, cela deviendra plus facile. My family, friends, and teachers inspired me not to give up. J'ai hâte de savoir plus. Merci tout le monde pour votre temps. Oh my goodness. Félicitations. Merci, Nord. Tu as très, très bien parlé. Wow. So if you can imagine, this is a student who was in the English stream last year and is able to converse like this en français uh, a few months into the program. That is just spectacular. Merci, Noor. Très, très bien. Et maintenant, uh, I'd like to present Madeleine, who's a grade 8 student here at Featherston. She'll tell you a bit about her experience. Alors, bonjour. Je m'appelle Madeleine. Alors, uh, avant quatrième année, j'étais dans un programme anglais encore à Featherston. J'étais là pour dix années, je pense. Um, et oui, c'était difficile dans la première année. Et J'étais un peu comme, maman, papa, pourquoi est-ce que tu m'as forcé de faire ça? Um, mais maintenant, je peux parler très facilement et c'est très facile de communiquer avec des personnes françaises et ça c'est très utile parce que on, a, on est juste à côté de Québec alors c'est un C'est utile. <laughs> so, I didn't really like French at first because, well, I, I was nine. It was difficult. Um, but it got better. And in grade eight, in grade four, the thing is you don't have a very big community in the younger grades. You have classes of generally, like I think I had classes of 12 kids. Then suddenly grade four happened and I met all new people, met people who understood me, wasn't restrained to the same small group of friends. Um, et puis maintenant en rythme, j'ai des profs très comme c'est les meilleurs profs que des années. Et puis, quand tu es en 8e avec M. Edwards, tu vas remarquer que il prend beaucoup de temps. Il ne fait pas qu'est-ce que um, il est exposé de faire. Alors, il est comme, oh, c'est le temps de l'anglais. Non, on va continuer avec le maths. Um, il juste, alors, c'est Régulièrement, on fait comme deux heures de mathématiques dans le matin et mm, c'est amusant. Mais <laughs> c'était, comme j'ai dit, c'était difficile, mais maintenant, je suis excitée que d'aller à l'école secondaire et de continuer avec le programme de français. Et oui, merci pour ton temps. Merci Madeleine, tu as très très bien parlé toi aussi. Many thanks.
to both of you for taking the time to join us and Madame as well, obviously. Okay, uh, that is probably our last slide. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Okay, so that concludes uh, our presentation. It was brief, but hopefully uh, very informative and enlightening and uh, will give you lots to think about and hopefully convince you that this program in our school is for your child. So again, don't hesitate to send me an email um, at brian.chiasson, C-H-I-A-S-S-O-N, at ocdsb.ca. It's on our website for Featherston Drive Public School, or um, just give us a call at school, 6.3-731-3357. OK, our office is open from 8.30 to 4.30. Registration is open. Yes, uh, Madame Albari is telling me that uh, I need to remind everybody of that. So registration is open. We'd be happy to have every single one of you join us. Okay. So uh, I guess that's a wrap. Thank you again to all three other participants and uh, parents looking forward to meeting you real soon. Bye.